Out of the huge pile of gun attachments you can choose from in the Battlefield games, quite a lot of them don't get used as much as they probably should, with some of the other alternatives seeming to be more viable, helpful choices instead. A lot of people tend to run with similar loadouts and prioritise certain attachments and scopes over the others. Not all the attachments are perfect and are going to fit into everyone's playstyle, but there's definitely a few that tend to fly under the radar a bit, even though they've got something to offer. And if you think outside the box and learn how to use some of these said attachments to their full potential, they can actually be a lot more useful than you'd probably think. Today we're going to be shining a light on a few of those underused, less appreciated weapon attachments that don't get as much recognition as they probably should do, sometimes proving to be effective choices even though they might not always seem to be. Here's my top 10 underrated gun attachments in the Battlefield games. So to start us off, we're heading over to Battlefield 4, where you'll be able to find quite a lot of different modern accessories to add onto your guns that'll assist your aim and vision. One of these accessories comes in the form of the magnifier, which is often looked at as a bit of a pointless thing, not really serving much of a purpose. This kind of functions like a reverse version of the canted iron sight, where you'll be adding extra zoom to your view rather than taking it away, being able to flip between two different settings on the fly. The magnifier basically just doubles the zoom level of your standard close range optics. Nothing more, nothing less. Pretty straightforward. Might not sound like the most helpful thing in the world, but in situations where you're going to be taking on players a little bit further away, being able to get a clearer view of them by using the magnifier sometimes might make life a little bit easier for yourself. Not a game changing accessory, but it's always good to have the option available, should you need to hone in on a target beyond close range. The only problem with the magnifier is that it does tend to look a little bit chunky, and it can clutter up your sight picture more so in ADS, making it less effective in close quarter fights. But it's still a decent option that doesn't really give you any disadvantage, unlike most of the other accessories that do have the tendency of giving your position away, like the laser sights and the flashlights. Suppressors have featured in most Battlefield games, and they've generally been a fairly popular attachment, concealing your position from the minimap at the expense of sacrificing range and bullet speed. They can drastically alter the performance of a gun and let you run around like a sneaky little bugger and wreak havoc behind enemy lines. Always a fun thing to have equipped when you're coordinating flanks and making your way through areas undetected. Battlefield 1 came along and threw a bit of a curveball, letting you shoot your gun as much as you want without the fear of popping up on the minimap for everyone else to see, also making suppressors redundant at the same time too. A pretty wild thing for the series to do, but one that made complete sense, being a game set around the First World War where suppressors were pretty rare. Fast forward a bit to Battlefield 5 and it brought along the same sort of idea from the last game, keeping people off the minimap when they fired their weapons. With that said, a few suppressors did make their way into Battlefield 5, and a lot of people questioned their usefulness, now seeming far less effective than they were prior to Battlefield 1. They might not seem like viable attachments now everyone's hidden from the minimap, but they will offer you with a few advantages nevertheless, not only hiding muzzle flash, essentially acting a bit like a flash hider attachment, but also taking away the directional damage markers from your enemy's screen when they get hit, making it a lot harder for them to respond to your attack. Not so useless after all. If you've ever wanted to feel like the Predator in a Battlefield game, then our next attachment is the one for you. Battlefield 4 gave us the option to equip a tri-beam laser sight, which basically emits three red lasers instead of just one, functioning in a similar kind of way to the standard version, but cranking things up a notch, heightening some of the laser sight's pros and cons. Because you've now essentially got three bright red lasers shining out of your gun's nose, this now makes it much more visible to enemy players, making you a more obvious target, especially in shadowy areas and inside dark interiors, where those lasers are going to seem a lot stronger and more vibrant. That might sound like a pretty big flaw, but this extra brightness intensity can also go in your favour as well, because although you'll be standing out a lot more, those lasers are going to be even more distracting and disorienting when they're aimed at someone, and in an even brighter glow that covers up a slightly larger area, which, combined with suppression effects, can make you a really awkward target to return fire at. So despite looking like a laser sight on crack, it's still going to provide you with the same statistical benefits, along with it making your enemy's visibility slightly worse too, making you a bit of a pain in the arse to be up against in a one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Jumping back over to Battlefield 5 next with the APCR bullets, which are designed to dish out extra damage towards vehicles and generally give jeeps a really bad time. The APCR rounds are available with the anti-tank rifles, like the Boys AT and the Panzerbusch, and when we first got to try them out, they literally didn't do anything at all. 
There was a bug in the game that stopped them from working how they should have, pretty much making them useless. But eventually this bug did get fixed, and ever since that, the APCR bullets now allow those anti-tank rifles to do exactly what they're designed to do. The problem is, because this specialisation got such a bad reputation at the beginning for not working, a lot of people simply brushed the APCR bullets to one side, in favour of high velocity bullets instead. Either ignoring them because they got used to the guns with high velocity bullets, or simply because they weren't aware that the APCR bullets ever got fixed. Nowadays, these armour piercing rounds can be brutal against light vehicles and tanks, causing a lot of disruption, preventing them from self fixing, and stopping them dead in their tracks, or from a safe distance. Kind of like a deadlier version of Battlefield 1's K bullet, only one that's also still really effective against infantry too. It's now become a great tool for assisting teammates take down armoured targets, and it's also great for preventing transport vehicles from getting around the map and flanking your position. Next up on the list is the 12G slug attachment that you'll be able to find on a lot of the game's shotguns. Probably not the most underrated thing in the world considering a fair few people do actually use slugs in Battlefield games, but still something that more people should probably give a chance, rather than just relying on the good old buckshot all the time. A lot of people are put off by the fact that you have to be more accurate with the slugs in order for them to be effective. They generally have a lot more range, but missing shots is going to be more common and problematic. They're definitely not for everyone, and the slug ammo for shotguns in practically all the games that feature it plays out in the same kind of way, turning your reliable shotty into something a lot riskier and trickier to use. With that said, the benefits they provide you with if you can get those shots to land is much more rewarding, adding a whole other dimension to shotgun mechanics, potentially making them much deadlier in a wider variety of situations, be it up close or over medium distances. If you're up for more of a challenge, then getting kills of a shotgun loaded up with slugs can be a pretty satisfying thing to do. Coming up in 5th place is another gun attachment from Battlefield 5 in the form of the Lati Sight, which you'll be able to find on the SMGs. Now it's safe to say that this sight gets a bit of a bad rep. It's easy to see why a lot of people look at it like garbage, having that fairly obstructive frame that tends to like dancing around when you squeeze the trigger. But the sight itself is actually really accurate and clear to use, having a really fine crosshair running through the middle that lets you stay on target quite easily. I could argue that the Lati sight is actually a lot clearer than quite a few of the SMG's stock iron sights, especially with the likes of the Tommy Gun and Type 2A. Standard irons give you a 1.5 times zoom, whereas the Lati sight gives you a 1.25 times zoom, so slightly less, potentially making it easier to use against targets closer by. You might be saying, well why not equip the reflex sight instead, which is also going to be really clear too, but less obstructive. The reflex sight is a decent choice, though I personally find that the Lati sight's crosshair is easier to see and follow, especially against bright environments, where the reflex's crosshair can sometimes get a bit lost in the background or the sky. The Lati sight's crosshair is pretty much a block colour, rather than a translucent glowing one, so I find that it can sometimes be better for tracking enemies and staying locked onto them. Next up is a pretty handy tool for snipers who like to engage in long range combat. The rangefinder from Battlefield 4 that can be attached to your bolt action rifles to easily see the distance between you and your target, letting you zero your rifle, making it easier to hit them and account for bullet drop. Often a fairly overlooked device that tends to get ignored in favour of the variable zoom accessory. Maybe because the variable zoom might seem more useful, maybe because quite a lot of people can't quite wrap their head around how to use the rangefinder properly. It's a lot simpler than it looks, with the blue number on the left indicating your rifle's setting, and the red number on the right indicating the range it needs to be set at, to hit where you're currently aiming. A lot of snipers will just ignore the zeroing options and try and gun down their target by aiming higher, to account for the bullet drop. But at extreme ranges across the map, this is a lot trickier to do, and often requires a lot of trial and error pop shots. The rangefinder might involve a bit of twiddling around with the zeroing settings, but it can be great for getting your bullets to go where you want them to over very long ranges, especially if you want to plant one of those bullets into your enemy's face, and beat them quickly and easily in a snipe off. In third place, we've got one of the more interesting attachments you'll be able to find in the Battlefield games with the target detector from Battlefield 4. If you don't fancy slapping on an accessory that's going to give you position away, then this thing is a pretty safe bet, providing you with an advantage without taking anything away. The target detector just automatically spots players when you're aiming in their direction, 
which might sound like a bit of a boring, pointless thing to have equipped, considering you could just spam the spotting button to do the same thing, which is sort of what most people do naturally when playing most Battlefield games anyway. But it saves you the hassle of having to do that, allowing you to just start shooting a tad sooner, rather than having to worry about manually plopping one of those orange Doritos over your enemy's head. The target detector is usually just going to do that for you, which is handy if the other guy manages to get away or take you down, allowing your teammates to finish the job or help you out. Even sometimes picking out enemies in the environment that you might not have even noticed otherwise, without the target detector's assistance. Is it the most useful attachment in the world? Probably not. But it's still a handy little device that gives you one less thing to think about as you play. Next up on the list is a site that a hell of a lot of people seem to hate on, but is actually a lot better than many people make it out to be. The Buckhorn sites from Battlefield 1. It's easy to see why these sites are called Buckhorn, with it having those two curved arms either side, kind of resembling antelope horns. With that said, you won't be using those arms in Battlefield 1, with the sights just functioning like an alternate version of most gun standard iron sights, with all your focus going on that central aiming post at the front of your weapon's barrel. Some people find the two curvy horn shaped arms a little bit obstructive and weird looking, but if you learn to ignore them, these sights can be really easy to use, giving you a decent overall sight picture that's pretty clear and simple to aim with. In fact, if you experiment with the buckhorn sights with quite a few of the different weapons, you'll probably find that they're actually an improvement over some of the gun's standard iron sights, like the Fedorov Optimap, M1907 and RSC SMG, along with quite a few of the others, removing some obstructive parts and making that central aiming post much more visible and easier to track targets with. So the last weapon attachment in the list is the bog standard but still very useful bipod from Battlefield 4, an underbarrel attachment that a lot of people just don't really seem to bother with. Bipods have been around in a lot of Battlefield games, and it's no secret that they're generally more effective in some of the newer games like in Battlefields 1 and 5, down to their mechanics being altered and down to them being deployed more fluidly. I guess bipods were still used a fair bit more earlier on during the Battlefield 3 days, but that's because there were less attachments to equip back then, so a lot of loadouts just featured them because there wasn't much of an alternative. But when Battlefield 4 came along, a lot of people traded the old bipod in for one of the new, much more interesting sounded underbarrel grip attachments which didn't require setting up and tweak some of your weapon stats just by simply having it equipped. Bipod mechanics might seem a little bit clunky at times in Battlefield 4, but once you've got it set up, it practically turns your weapon into a laser beam, letting you take down targets over some surprisingly long ranges really quickly and easily. It's not going to alter the weapon stats in a positive or negative way like the grips do, though you do have to get used to the setup time and take into account that you won't be able to move around while it's being used. But in the right situation, the bipod can be one of the most effective attachments in Battlefield 4. So there we have it guys, my top 10 underrated gun attachments in the Battlefield games. Do let me know down below in the comments which ones you think are the most underrated and underused, and be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoy the video and want to see more. Take it easy folks, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.